Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with my best of 2017 video. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay down the rules here and say that this is gonna be limited to knives that I've reviewed and new knives that came out in 2017. Before I get into the specifics of my top five that I developed, I wanna talk about a few knives that deserve an honorable mention here. So I'm gonna go low tech on this. I don't really have a, a lot of good editing skills going on, so I'm just gonna talk about it off of my list here. At the top, I wanted to mention the Benchmade Bugout. Now, I have the Anthem here. This made my top five, but the Bugout deserves an honorable mention for being a super lightweight, thin stock, and well-made knife. Probably the best new lightweight carry knife for 2017. The Spyderco Sprint Runs were amazing this year. They really developed their steel uh, offerings. They offered a lot more models in S110. They started coming out with the Maximet versions. They had some 52100s. Of course, this Blade HQ uh, Manix and M4. Just a great set of Sprint Runs that came out of Spyderco. Really can't complain about those. The Para 3 also deserves an honorable mention because it was such a hyped knife. I will say it was sort of a letdown uh, mostly, but it, it deserves a spot on the list because it is an important knife in the Spyderco lineup. The Alamic Busker definitely deserves some credit because of how unique that knife is. A small front flipper knife uh, with really, high, really, really high quality, really, really well made. A little bit on the expensive side, a little bit on the weird side, so it's not going to make the top five of my list, but it certainly deserves a mention. Next on the list is the Arcform Slim Foot. This knife is actually right here. This knife really kind of captured the hearts and minds of a lot of people because of its interesting design. The fact that it's a mid-tech built through Riot knives and that it's designed by uh, custom knife maker Tough Knives, AKA Jeff Blauvelt. So uh, this knife has a few faults. I will be releasing my video on this uh, in the near future and it didn't quite make my top five list. Next is a definitely a 0392. Both the Blue Bowie and the Black versions were released this year, but they don't make the top of the list because this was technically a knife released in 2016, maybe even back into 2015. So it doesn't make the list officially, but I got to throw that in there. The 0850 from ZT was offered this year. That was an awesome knife, blue carbon fiber, CPM 20 CV, Rexford and Sinkovich design, but I think it was let down by its strange sort of design choices with that six shooter stuff going on there. The Peter Rosenti Satori was released this year. That certainly deserves a mention. I loved that knife. The smoothness, the quality, the integral handle. I love Rosenti's work. This is a recently acquired Nirvana. This is actually the last Nirvana that will ever be made, according to him. And I absolutely love it. You, of course, will be getting a unique video on this one when I'm ready to make it. But uh, the Satori had a few failings. The, uh, the blade was a little bit aggressive looking and it wasn't ideal for everyday carry, so it's not gonna make the list. And last on this honorable mention list is the Steelcraft Bodega. My diagnosis on that knife is that it was too good. It was so good that it made me not wanna go buy a custom, that that knife is 99% of a custom knife. Why would I spend $5,000 when I can spend $500? It just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal my top five contenders for the 2017 Dr. Frunky Knife of the Year. Now, I tried to limit this to knives that weren't so high-end, uh, but really the high-end knives actually self-limit because they're so expensive that I don't really recommend them except to extremely crazy people. These five knives I thought were extremely well done, knives that I genuinely enjoyed carrying, and knives that are sort of available to most people. And so let's get into the list here. At the very top, I've got the Booze Blade Smoke. This knife took me by surprise. I was really expecting not to like this knife at all. Uh, and in fact, I fell in love with it. The action is extremely smooth. Uh, it runs on ceramic bearings for $200. You get S35VN, titanium that's green anodized, and ceramic bearings, like I mentioned. And the action is incredible. I love the fact that it's got an opening hole so you can open it by multiple different techniques. Uh, I preferred this to the Busker because it's a bigger size. I also absolutely love the blade on this. That perfect full flat grind came extremely sharp. This is a wonderful slicer. This is one of the best EDC options of the year and certainly the best front flipper release this year, hands down. Next, I want to talk about the Benchmade Anthem. Benchmade stepped up their game this year. Uh, they sort of upgraded a few knives. The Freak kind of looked like an upgraded Griptilian. The Bug Out was a nice, quality, lightweight knife. And then they came out with the Anthem right here, an integral titanium-handled knife. Usually, you only get integrals on super high-end knives like this Peter Rosenti. 
Nirvana right here, but uh, beautifully, beautifully done. This one came originally in bronze. This one has been modified by Spade Knife Works, but uh, beautiful finish work, really nice blade in the 20 CV. Beautiful action, runs extremely smoothly, and uh, I'm, I've been super impressed. They even revised the, uh, the lock system, the axis lock, to be more reliable and not rely on Omega Springs. A lot of innovation came out of Benchmade on this knife. They definitely deserve to be on this list. Next on the list, I'm going to talk about the Spyderco Shaman. The Spyderco Shaman really took the world by storm. This knife, I think, has been universally loved. It's all the things that you love about the Paramilitary 2, the Manix, and the Native series all rolled up into a nice knife. I like to call this knife Blade, just like Wesley Snipes in the Vampire movies. It's got all of the best genes from all of the good stuff to make it super strong and walk in the daylight, but it doesn't have any of the real drawbacks. Uh, and definitely, definitely gets stronger if you uh, get it near blood. Anyways, uh, this knife is amazing. It's got one little flaw, and I think everyone knows what it is. Uh, it's that little tab in the in the lock area right there. But if that were gone, this knife would truly be spectacular. And I think once they make the Shaman 2, and they've revised that, and they start coming out with the sprint runs and different handle materials and blade materials, this one is going to pro uh, this could even replace the PM2 in popularity. It's that good. It really, really, really is. So uh, the next knife I want to talk about is the ZT0055. That knife was the Gustavo Kikini collaboration. It had the SLT flipper tab. It had the unique Warncliffe blade shape. Unfortunately, I don't have that knife on me anymore. That has gone to a new owner. And uh, he's very, very happy with it. I loved that knife. I love the action on it. I think that ZT has really dialed in their uh, frame lock flipper action. I'll bring out this 0801 just for a placeholder right now. Uh, that knife was just so unique and packed so much innovation into a $220 package that I just really enjoyed it. It was worth more than that. They could have sold it for $400 and they would have still sold a whole bunch of them. But... It was really, really nice, and uh, unfortunately, I just don't have it. And so my last but not least is going to be the Carter Chuprin BBM. This knife kind of came out of nowhere. It was announced early in the calendar year, sometime back in March, uh, just sort of out of nowhere. You know, Nick uh, Chuprin is a relatively unknown knife maker to me. Robert Carter, of course, is very famous. I had his Talon earlier this year. Uh, he comes from a long line of knife makers that are very, very famous uh, for their ergonomics and quality, and he makes some amazing high-end knives himself. And so when I saw his name associated with the mid-tech, I jumped on the opportunity. The details were vague. The customizing options were a little bit hard to understand right at first, and it took a very long time for this to come through, almost six months before I got this in my hand from the time of ordering. So that's okay, but what came out of it was absolutely spectacular. A small knife, 3.25 inches, that Dr. Frunky actually likes. It fits my hand like a glove. My fingers wrap all the way around. The ergonomics are ideal. My thumb fits right on there. The knife itself is stunningly beautiful. A hand-done, hollow ground blade by Robert Carter himself. Robert Carter's signature blackened titanium finish. This is as close to a Robert Carter custom as I can get right now for about a tenth of the price. And so I'm really, really happy with that. And uh, I'll just say that this has the most addictive spider flick action of any knife. Such a crisp detent, runs extremely smoothly on ceramic bearings. Just absolutely amazing. Notice also that there's no screw on the front of the knife. Uh, it's nice, clean design. It's got only two screws on it. This screw actually does the clip the backspacer and the other body at the uh, at the same time. Amazing, amazing work right there. So this is my favorite knife of 2017. This wins in my list. Now this is not widely available, so some people are gonna get mad at me for choosing this, but please understand that this knife has blown me away in all aspects. From the way that it cuts, it's got Nitro V steel, it's got great ergonomics, it's got a great lineage. And it's like, uh, it's like I won the jackpot. I don't know how to explain it. This knife just came out perfectly. And it's perfectly suited to my looks and my needs for everyday carry. So really thankful to have that one in my collection. What do you guys think of my list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's your favorite knife of 2017? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments. Go and check out my other friends out on YouTube making their top 10, top 5 lists. Uh, click subscribe to my channel here. Check me out on Instagram at Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, take care.